Here's a Yezu FT-225RD that I got at a ham fest recently and um, uh, it's it's non-working and the guy was honest he told me he couldn't get it to work. Got it home and I found out the power supply was bad, it had a bad regulator in it so I replaced that and it had a uh, of course a burned out um, bulb that illuminates the the meter I replaced that with an LED, but it still has a problem. As you can see, the display. Nothing in the 144 band or section of the band. 145, I just get the first two digits and the same in the other three. And, um, seems to be some other problems with this too. Uh, I didn't have any audio and the, uh, the external speaker jack was bad and um, I had to fix that. Um, it didn't make contact with the internal speaker when you disconnected an ex external speaker. So those are the problems I found so far so I need to need to look further into this. It's a nice radio. These were made in, I think, 1979 they came out. And um, they were made for a couple years. But um, they'll, put, they'll operate sideband, upper and lower sideband, CW, FM, AM. Put out 24 watts PEP on sideband. And I believe 25 watts on FM and 8 watts on AM. So... These are nice radios. Um, they're fairly easy to fix. Kind of hard to get at some of the components inside that I'll show in a minute. Here's a symptom. The display is unstable. This is in the uh, 147 megahertz position of the band. Here's 140. Six. You can see we just get one digit one and four. Nothing in one forty five or forty four. This is the bottom of the counter unit with a shield removed. I'm gonna test some of these solder joints look a little flaky and I noticed when I put some torsion on this board here it affected the output a little bit so I'm gonna re-solder some of these connections and check the board over too. There's, like I say, there's a few solder connections here that look a little flaky so that's the next step and then we'll put it back in the unit and see if it affects the output. Okay, right now the band switch is on 145. And I can switch to 146. 147, it starts to act flaky again. But back to 140. 6, 140, oh, now it went blank. Okay, here's 146. When I turn the band switch to 145, the display blanks. What happens is the PLL is out of lock. Here's the PLL board. When the PLL loses lock, feeds a DC voltage up through this line up to the display unit to blank the display and what happens when the display is lit this terminal here the unlock terminal when it's lit, this is down to almost zero, about two millivolts. When the PLL goes out of lock, this point goes positive. 
I measured it at uh, just about just about four volts, and that blanks it. So it's getting an unlock signal from the PLL at this point. So the problem is pointing back to the PLL board, which is in here. This is the PLL assembly. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, you have to have an extender card to get to this unit here to take any measurements or adjustments. And it's an edge connector with an extender card so I can operate the unit with this module outside of the unit. So I'll have to get some type of an extension board to lift this PLL unit so I can test that. So evidently the display is working. The problem is with the PL. At least that's what it seems to it right now. This Toshiba chip right here, a TC5032P, this is a counter chip that drives the the, the uh, seven segment LEDs in the output. This is um, one of the things I like about these older radios. Each of the modules plugs into a connector on the main board. There's um, edge connectors that each one is connected to. And um, the modules come out. This is the PL module. I think this is where the problem is. This is sending an unlock signal to the display which is um, blanking the display and of course I want to uh, take some measurements on this and possibly adjust it. The problem is as with all of these you can see down in there there's the connector when the when the boards in place and operating you can't get to any of the uh, connections to take any measurements so uh, the only answer to that is to get an extender card make sure you orientate these correctly so that you can mount the board above the unit here and you can take measurements and make adjustments but you need an extender card and I looked on the internet and uh, the price of the extender cards was actually more than I paid for this broken radio so I decided what I would do is um, make one myself here it is this is just this was made out of junk parts I took a vector board just a, a PC board prototyping board and I had to cut it to match match the boards that plug into the radio. So this this board was actually wider and I cut it and notched it, made sure the contacts lined up. And this board, PL board, has only got connectors on one side, but some of the modules in here have um, two-sided connectors. So I used I used an edge connector that had individual uh, sides that are not connected. There's a this row and the back row are separate, so I've got two separate, two separate connections. So with the extender card plugged into the main part of the unit here, the modules can be plugged into the extender card like this, which I'll try to do with one hand. And that will give you access to both sides of the board. And this extender card can be used with any of the modules in this unit. They all use um, 18, uh, 18 connectors. Like I say, some are on both sides, but there's 18, and they're, they're all the same. What's nice is they even have these um, overlays that have all the um, markings on each plug-in unit and all the adjustment locations. So that's pretty handy to have. So now I have to do figure out why the PLL 
unit is not operating correctly and maybe that will solve the display problem. We'll just have to see. Okay, the unit's repaired now. With the help of that extender card here I made, I was able to um, find a small problem on the uh, the PLL board, and that's been fixed and also adjusted. Very touchy, the uh, adjustment for that PL. Anyway, the unit is working, as you can see. Test, one, two, three, test. And transmitting on a handy talkie. Test, one, two, three, test, one. Hello, test. Hello, test one, two, three. Anyway, it's working on FM. I need to test it on sideband, AM, CW. But um, anyway, it's back, come back to life. So I'm going to put the hatches back on it and uh, maybe we'll put it on the air and try to contact somebody on two meters. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye for now.